What is going on guys? So welcome back to the channel and today we're going to do a Q&A just to do a Q&A and you know I don't have my camera with me and I do need my phone in order to get the questions so I'm recording on my Insta360 camera and I am in Houston if you watched my last video had a pretty good run and you know I was like let me make some content while I'm here and let's go ahead and answer some questions. So these are the questions that y'all asked me in the comment section. So if you leave a comment down in the comment section, usually I'll take a look at those. Every once in a while I'll do a Q&A here on the channel. So let's go ahead and do that. So this one is from Metatron Black. He actually asked two questions here and we'll answer both of them. So Metatron Black, he's one of my uh, commenters that comment in probably 100% of my videos right now. So I really enjoy seeing the comments and I try to respond to them as best as I can. Uh, they, it is a little bit time consuming to do that, but I try to do my best, you know, try to comment to the best of my ability. And let's see what his question is. He asked, are there any products that you bought or received that was really not good? So yeah, there are, have been a few. If you guys saw me review like the head, like it was a head massager, had this whole helmet thing going on. It was actually pretty cool. And I was pretty excited to review it as well. And when I got it, I put it on. It just felt like it was squeezing my head too much. I didn't really like the feeling. So it wasn't for me. So I g actually gave this one a Goku Runner's like meh. And uh, that was like a meh one. So I, I usually do Goku Runner's thumbs up, Goku Runner's meh, and also Goku Runner's thumbs down. And I have gave some products some thumbs down, but there has been some products that I just don't do a review on because I don't want to ruin a company, especially if they're a small company. Uh, there was this brand that gave me a pair of shoes. Uh, it was the Heelist one. So I did introduce it to y'all on this channel, but for me, I didn't like it. I just didn't feel like the quality was that great. So I didn't review it and I told them, I was like, you know what, this is gonna be a, uh, a bad review for y'all. So if you guys want to improve on the shoe and get send me a new one, I'll wait for that, or I just won't put about put out a review. I'll just leave the first look at it. So that's what I did. I didn't want to ruin the company. It's so small. They were just building their first shoe. They didn't want to ruin their brand. I know that I don't have a huge pull here on YouTube, but you know, if there is one review on the shoe, people aren't going to like it, and I just didn't want to ruin the shoe for the company. So uh, yeah, so I do give some thumbs down sometimes. And I think uh, some products that I've eaten before definitely got some thumbs down too. So usually I'll, uh, you know, try to do my best, to give you all an honest review. And uh, if not, if you guys don't see a full review, if you guys just see a first look, those are probably some products that I just didn't really like. So there you go. So the next question that he asked is this. This is, uh, when you're feeling discouraged, what picks you up, family, friends, and faith? So this is a running channel and... For sure, faith picks me up whenever I am down. And uh, during the ultra marathon, when you're down, you know, you got to have faith that you're going to be able to do this, that God gave you the strength to finish the race. But also, when your friends and family are out there, that gives you an extra boost for sure. Like, whenever I saw Anna at the aid station, I'm like, man, I don't have to think anymore. I can just follow her. Uh, it really helps you to see the support and support for my my friends here on YouTube, uh, you know, whenever I did that 100, 100K, uh, Kelly, she actually gave me a bunch of quotes for me to, you know, rely on when things got tough. Uh, I think she sent me an email and she wrote down a bunch of quotes and I, I I used that. I used that during my ultra marathon to get me through that 100K and it worked, man. You know, I, I appreciate uh, the, the love and the following here, here on YouTube. So keep on, keep on helping me out because, uh, you know, running is uh, harder for a big guy like me. And uh, whenever I see that people are actually, you know, caring about what I post or what I do, my runs, uh, it kind of gives me a boost to, you know, don't give up. Keep on going because somebody is watching. So let's go to the next question. Not too many. This one is from Large Eddie. He asked me about my running uh, and you know I've been doing a lot of easy runs lately just to get back my fitness and it's been working uh, my fitness is getting back and he asked this question uh, after seeing like I talked about a lot of slow easy running he said have you thought about mixing in one or two harder running efforts a week and yeah I actually have and I, and I do whenever I go to my group runs my GTS runs usually people will push you a little harder and uh, it's good it's good for you to try to keep up try to you know push yourself a little bit and from doing that I've learned that you know especially from going 
especially for moving from walking to running all the time, you have to kind of enjoy that suck or, or push past the part where it gets hard because it's easy to give up and start walking. But if you push past that, sell your breath, sell your heart rate, you know, find your stride, you can surprise yourself and keep on running at a pace that you're comfortable at where you don't have to walk, where you could just run at the easy pace, easier pace, but still running and go for longer. So uh, just embrace it, embrace the hard parts of your, of your training and you know, you'll become a better runner. I think that's where you get stronger whenever you are, you know, mentally strong, physically strong, and you know that you can actually do it. So surprise yourself every once in a while and push yourself you're going to enjoy it. Uh, enjoy the ride. It's 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 fun trying to get back my fitness. You know when you are unfit, uh, it's 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 not a it's not it's not fun to go out and run. Like you don't look forward to the run. But now that I'm getting my fitness a little bit, you know, upper, um, I'm enjoying the runs and I look forward to my run. So let's go to the next question over here. Thanks for that, Large Eddie. Uh, this is from the Get Lean Program Barbell Brigade. I did a uh, five weeks in review. So uh, they asked Enoch, he asked, uh, any updates on how the program worked out in the end? So I was five weeks in into the program. I think that was right before Anna's birthday. And we decided to go to Houston, get a massage. And the massage lady, man, she messed me up. I already had some issues with my hip. But after she worked my hip, like with her elbow, with her feet, with everything, uh, I felt I walked away. I walked away from that and I was hurting bad. Like I did not work out after that probably for a month and a half because I just couldn't work out. So I never finished the program, the five week program. Great program gets you to, it gets you to learn different movements that you're probably only doing the same movements every day when you go to the gym. That's what I like to do anyway. But doing these other movements really do help you to get fitter. And you know, you, you want to strengthen your whole body and just not certain parts. So uh, I like the program, get lean program. I might get back into it, but probably not. Uh, I like, I like going to the gym and kind of just doing what, I'm doing, uh, you know, <laughs> pretty much bench, uh, not too much squat and some deadlift. So uh, just like doing that, working on my arms. Uh, but yeah, the program's good. I never finished it. So I won't do a full, you know, 12 week review of the program. Let's get to the next question. And uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good question. This is actually from Adaya. So she's been a, you know, a subscriber and commenter for a long time. I think she's from Atlanta, but she asked me, how do you choose your music for a video you're recording? I've been planning on doing like a whole video on this, but you know, on YouTube, if you do use other people's music, you can't monetize your video. Uh, sometimes you actually will get a flag. So it's kind of a, a roulette wheel. If you, if you post, if you post video with music, sometimes your music could be muted the whole time. So uh, the video is pretty much unwatchable at that point. So what I've been doing is getting music or licensed music from a, a service. Uh, right now I'm using audio. Uh, I find that it's it's okay for the music. Uh, I've used Soundstripe, I've used Musicbed, I've used a bunch of other ones, but for sure, try to get music that you're paying for because there are people you know, making that music and if you are using them, they should get their money for it. So uh, I try to use paid services like that. It's usually about like 100 to $150 a, year for those services and yeah i'll have a link to what i use audio that's what i've been using right now and you know music really helps out a video especially for uh, my ultra documentaries that i put out you know it's usually a, you can find music that's exciting you can find music that's you know kind of like just to pass some time and at the end i like to build it up like i usually look for a song that's built up and uh where it'll actually you know build up to the end where the, the excitement is all there. So uh, I, I like to use those. Uh, I, I like to use those music services. And uh, that's one of the most important parts of my videos. I think that I know some people don't like music, but I feel that it really adds to the video when you actually do add music. So yeah, I use uh, audio right now. So the links will be down below. What's up? Let's see one more question. I think I've been on it for 10 minutes already for maybe uh, let's see. This one is about the Garmin 245 music review. Uh, it, I said, is it worth it in 221? In, 20, in 2021, uh, Juan Jimenez asked, is it still worth it to buy the 245 in 2022, now 2023? I think so. I actually have the 255 right here on this wrist. And, uh, you know, the, two, the, two, the 245, 
that was a great watch. It did a lot of things. Like if you want a, a watch that has music, that that pretty good battery life, not as good as the 255. Uh, it was a little bit small, but man, these Garmin's right now, they're powerful. And the 245, if you find it on Facebook Marketplace, you probably get it for a lot cheaper than I think it's like 250 when I when I was looking at it, or maybe even more than that. But yeah, the 245 is still a really good, powerful watch. Uh, so yeah, get that watch, 245. Uh, and then this is on my Houston Marathon. They asked, uh, am I running the Houston Marathon? I'll answer this because of course the Houston Marathon is over. I didn't run it, but my next races are going to be the Las Vegas Half Marathon. Let me know in the comments if you are going to do it. I'll be doing that one and I'll also be doing the Blue Bell Half Marathon. I don't know what else is I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm trying to look for more races now. Now that I am getting my running legs back, I'm happy to go out there and look for races so I can actually challenge myself to push myself and run and run a lot of it. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this question and answer. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below and I will answer them in a future video. Hope you guys have enjoyed my channel. I've been posting a lot of reels. Reels are what it is all about, especially in 2023. So hope you guys are enjoying that as well. But I'll definitely put some more long format content out there for you guys too. All right, guys. See you guys next one. Peace.